Welcome to MOOC course on Introduction to Proteogenomics. In today's lecture, we will continue with Mr. Abhijit Dikshit, who will talk about the droplet digital PCR, which will be continuation of his previous lecture, where he started discussing about the basics of this technology. He will talk about the type of samples one can use as the input for the instrument. Instrument can be used for multiplexing as well. Even up to 8 plex assays using single flow cells have been reported. The principal requirement for multiplexing is the significant size difference between the amplicons. At least there should be 30 base pair difference. So, let us now welcome Mr. Abhijit to have an interactive session on digital PCR technology. Is everybody clear with the technology how it works? Anybody has any queries? Yeah, sure. The sample does not bind to the droplet ma'am. Yes, so these are droplets which are made where your oil is making a cover right and the sample and the reaction mix is inside those droplets. It is an amalgamation missiles in case you know what missiles are that is how it works. Any other queries? Right ma'am. You would have to do extraction, you would have to do extraction right. You can have your DNA or RNA from any source does not matter. Right ma'am. Hmm. You isolate your single cells by a flow cytometer or any other technology. Mm -hmm. So, what you can do is even if you have a clump, even if you have say a pool of cells right, you are wanting to look at a particular type of amplicon. No, in case of individual cell then you will have to have a cell to extract a nucleic acid out of it. If you have a pool, how would the system differentiate between what cells is it come the DNA or RNA coming from? Right. Okay, I know that there can be two types of cells. Right. Right. I want to separate them out into single cells so that the leaf like there is only a single cell which has to be extracted. Right. And then I want to score whether there is expression or not. Right. Then you separate. So you want to do a separation by this method? Yeah. Separation comes PCR. No, separation you will have to do by any other method. The PCR can happen here. The PCR and the quantification letter part can happen in this. What you are talking of is also a different technology which we have. Right. So, it is a workflow ma'am where you isolate your single cells by flow cytometer and then go ahead with this right, right correct. What you are talking of that technology is also there which is a different technology altogether. I mean we can have offline discussion we have another technology which works for that a single cell isolation and sequencing. Yeah. At a time you can have two flow because there are two fluorophores there are two lasers you can have two, but uh, there are publications where people have done up to 8 plex assays with a single fluorophore. What you simply need to do is keep the size of amplicons variable at least a 50 base pair difference between the two amplicons. So, what it would do is yeah now this cluster which you see is from one type of amplicon right. If another amplicon is smaller or bigger than that that would give a different layer here. You can quantify each of these clusters individually for example, in 2D you get it here right. So, you will have another cluster altogether. So, you can have I mean there are a lot of publications that people have one up to 8 plex assays. Sorry yes ma'am for a multiplex at least a 30 way 30 to 50 base pair difference if you have to go more than 2 plex assays. Right. It is not for single cell isolation, it is after you have a single cell isolation because that amount of nucleic acid coming out of the single cell is going to be very minimalistic. Mm -hmm. So, the system is capable enough sensitivity wise to capture even that mini minuscule amount of nucleic acid. But for that I need a system that of course, A single cell right. Yes. 
it's not very difficult ma'am you can do a single cell isolation by flow cytometer very easily a flow cytometer can do a single cell isolation very easy and as i was mentioning ma'am we have another system also it's another technology altogether where we can do a single cell right from isolation to this to sequence that's a parallel technology different altogether it's a end point piece here yes yeah no what else why what i meant was this a real time display how it comes it's a end point piece here yeah. anything else any any other queries uh yes a uh, ideal limit what we say is from a 60 base pair to a 350 base pair right 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 so it's, it's, it's actually not as i told what is recommended is from 60 base pairs to 350 base pairs like is for real time pcr as well but we have got people who have amplified and specifically quantified up to 2 kb fragments as well very easily to get so what i am talking of are the ideal conditions which come from the literature which is published when it's been manufactured what people have done there are more than around 4000 publications now if i'm not wrong with this section and people have done things which we even we couldn't imagine of when you were talking about the new case if there is a uh, if there is a single uh, right right so right. the prime is that you are specific for this yes yes so that's when you get absolutely so the prime requirement or the best amplification results which you will get with this doesn't depend on the quality of your nucleic acid it depends on the specificity of your primers if your primers are specific the data you get is absolutely specific the quality of nucleic acid would not hamper your data yes ma'am no it can't be you need to have you need to have a specific primer yes yes you need to have a specific primer for your amplification that you're looking for and this is the fluorescence amplitude as each of your droplets is emitting a fluorescence if there is a amplifiable dna in the droplet it will give fluorescence right and when it emits a fluorescence it will be plotted here if it doesn't emit it is here right when the system is optimized in such a way that your specific length of a amplicon if it emits a fluorescence it will emit a fluorescence in certain range so the system takes care of those aspects as well yes because it, as i told it's like a flow cytometer the yes at least 30 or 50 to 30 to 50 base pair difference between two amplicons anything else technologically if i can answer some yes ma'am the slide before this ma'am yes one cartridge right right so just the real time pcr is 95 or 96 96 right so what eight at a time for droplet generation so this process this you're talking of right this takes one minute okay so you transfer your droplets in a pcr plate you generate next yes the you're transferring these right you're generating your droplets which are here in this top row to a pcr plate and then put a pcr no it doesn't happen doesn't happen it's been well optimized for that it's been well optimized for that the droplets which are formed are very stable you don't need that in this you don't need that for this technology because each of your reaction is what is splitting into 20000 replicates so you don't need to have technical or biological replicates like you do for real time pcr yes sample size no each of your reaction dna will be divided into 20000 so how can dna won't get divided that your dna is not getting fragmented it's not getting fragmented right it is getting separated like in a big group because that in a single when they take too many first slide for this 
This one? It was in the video? Yeah, wait. I won't be able to forward the video yet because I can't see anything here. Yeah, tell me a query, ma'am. It's not one fragment, right? There are multiple fragments. Right, right. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Your DNA is your DNA is getting your DNA is getting fragment. Your DNA is not getting fragmented. It's getting partitioned. Correct. No, what is happening is your you put your replicates or triplicates to eliminate most of the times to eliminate your pipetting errors. If you go for a real time PCR, right, you should not have more than 0.5 CT value difference, right, right. So, here it does not matter because the data that you get is copies of your DNA per microliter of your sample, right. Right. Doesn't matter, sir. Not all droplets will anyways not have. That's okay. We have publications where people have got 0 0.0001 percent of the mutant as well. Right. Right. So the data that comes out. The data that comes out comes after implying a poisons algorithm, which takes care of your statistical significance. From the publication perspective, that you are asking, there are more than 4000 publications already with this technology where this direct analysis has been done. Your, your term of asking is the SD, right? The standard deviation that you would get from each 3 replicates that you get, correct? That is required because you might consider that your handling might be different, right? There will be pipetting errors to take care of those things. Right, right. Correct. So, but the drop, right, but the technology is made in such a way that that transfer of droplets, none, none of your DNA molecules are left behind. The technology makes sure that all of your reaction mix components are split up and are present in the droplets. None of it is left behind in the cartridge. The system is that rigid. It does not leave anything behind in the cartridge. Yes. None of the droplets what we make here for example, in the first step here, yeah, these droplets which are made, right. Yes, yes. Nothing is left behind in your cartridge. All of it is getting transferred. Nothing left is there back in the cartridge. The cartridge are not, you cannot reuse the cartridge. No, no. You cannot reuse the cartridge. Yeah. It is an endpoint PCR, sir. So, that is what I mentioned. There was an entire slide on that, right? Here. Here. It quantitates it, the data that you get is it will give you how much ever DNA or RNA was present in your sample. It gives you copies of your amplified DNA in each sample in copies per microliter. It is not a you do not have to do any manual calculation like you do in real time PCR. You have a CT value, then you do a FALF method delta CT, delta delta CT. You do not have to do anything. The system quantitates and gives you the precise value. Yes, ma'am. The minimum amount of DNA you mean, right? Again, we've 
we have got lots of data where people have worked on femtograms of DNA as well. Even a single copy spike, you have uh, a company called as Horizon, which gives you copy number controls, right? It gives you one copy, two copies, so you can spike your sample and check the copies. The system has been validated through that. That template can be of any size. Any, the template can be of any size, but your amplicon should not be very long. Ideally, should not be above a KB. Right. So, in case you are using genomic DNA, right, we recommend doing a restriction enzyme digestion. If you are using a genomic DNA, which you feel is going to be very long. Correct, correct. If it is a C DNA, then does not matter, but it is a genomic DNA, right, we recommend doing a restriction digestion. So, that your template is available for the primers to bind and elongate. It will go in either of the droplets. It can be one droplet also, it can be 10 also, it can be 100 also, it can be 1000 also, does not matter because it reads each of them individually. So, this thing what you see here, yeah, even if you have this one droplet positive everything else is negative, you can be sure that that one droplet is because there is some DNA which is gone there, which is amplified and hence there is a fluorescence. Right, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Above five, generally about ten lakh copies. If it's there, then it starts because what will happen is all of it will be positive. Then you'll have no negative droplets. All of it will be positive, so you might not get a very precise amount of DNA. That's about ten lakh copies. If you have that abundant amount of DNA in one sample, if you have. Per sample, per sample, per droplet because 20,000 into 5 becomes that number. So, per what happens is the system while it gives you the data, it takes into account your forward scatter and side scatter like it does in a flow cytometer. So, even if there are up to 5 copies in one droplet, it quantifies them as 5 or 4 or 3 or 2 or 1, it does not give you as one copy, maximum is 5 per droplet that amounts to more than 10 lakh copies in your sample. Anything else? Yeah. Right. So, in that case, yeah, you would get multiple clusters here. You would not get a single cluster. If it is amplifying, it is binding somewhere else, right. The size of the amplicon will be variable. It cannot be of same size, right. So, it will give a different cluster here, you would not find such clean clusters, you will have another clear cluster which is which can be of a smaller or a bigger size, it is very sensitive for that. Because right, so maybe in case you know one of your standard, if even if you have one standard for the first time if you are putting a new reaction. You have one sample where you know this is going to work for sure, right. You just put that for once and see which fluorescence amplitude does that come to for once and you know that value next time. So, if you are getting something variable, that means there is something non specific also which is amplifying along with your specific thing. In conclusions, I hope today you have learned how DD PCR can be used for multiplexing. It has very high sensitivity and a specificity. DD PCR makes sure that the sample is not lost during the droplet formation, hence, increases the efficiency of the process. In the next supplementary lecture, we will talk more about various proteomics applications. Thank you.